want to talk a little bit about the distance formula, which I think is probably a formula you've seen before in Algebra 1. Not 100% sure of that, but if it isn't, uh, you'll see it here. Uh, the distance formula basically comes out of the Pythagorean theorem, and it allows you to figure out the length between uh, two different points. Like, let's say I want to find the distance between the point negative 1, 5, and the point 7, 11. Okay. Now, um, before I go on, I, I just want to make the point here. Uh, if you have two points that are horizontally apart from each other, uh, say I've got a point at, um, let's say this is the point 1, 1, and this is the point 5, 1. Those two points are horizontally oriented. Uh, in other words, I'm one unit over here in the x direction, I'm five units over in the x direction there. Um, horizontally, you should just be able to subtract these two values. Uh, five minus one is equal to four, and that's the length of that segment. Uh, same kind of thing would apply if I had a vertical line segment. Uh, if I had a vertical line segment, say I had the point one, one, and the point one, seven, um, again, this point here is one unit up, this one's seven units up. Um, should just be able to subtract seven and one and find out that that length is six, okay? So if things are perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical, there's really no need for a distance formula. You can just subtract the smaller value from the larger value. That should tell you the length of the segment, okay? However, in this particular case, these points are diagonally located. So it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. Uh, negative 1, 5 can be right here. And 7, 11 Okay, so you notice I've got a point here and I've got a point there. Um, what's going to happen here is I'm trying to find the length of a diagonally oriented segment. And <clears throat> short of you know, measuring it with a ruler or something, that's not something I'm going to be able to do uh, without some kind of geometric connection here. All right? Here's how I'm going to approach it. I'm going to make a right triangle. And now you can see that length is actually the hypotenuse of a right triangle. All I really need to do here is find the length of the horizontal side and find the length of the vertical side, and then I can put the numbers in the Pythagorean theorem and I can find the overall side lengths. Okay? Well, how's that going to work? Well, take a look at my diagram. Remember what I showed you before. Horizontal distance, you should be able to subtract your x coordinates and you should be able to find the length of this horizontal side. Okay? Notice the x coordinate of this point right here is negative 1. Okay, we're one unit back. The x coordinate of this point over here is seven. Okay, so I'm going from seven back to negative one. Okay, you could, you could count that on a graph, or you can really just take seven minus negative one. Okay, not seven minus one, but seven minus negative one. If you subtract those two values, it's gonna tell you that side length there is eight, all right? Now I want to find the length of this side. It's vertical. So I should be able to take a look at the y coordinates. Okay? Uh, this segment here is starting out at 5. It extends up to a y coordinate of 11. Okay? So if I take 11 minus 5, that's going to tell me that that side length has a length of 6. And now I can use the quadratic formula. Okay, I can take 6 squared plus 8 squared, and that should be equal to my hypotenuse squared. I'll, I'll call my hypotenuse length D, okay? Uh, it should be equal to D squared. And uh, anyway, if you solve this, you're going to get 100 equals D squared. Uh, D is just going to end up equal to 10, okay? And that's the distance. Uh, it's 10 units from this point here to that point there, all right? So you could draw a right triangle every single time, and you can put those points into the Pythagorean theorem, and you can come up with the length of the side. Okay? However, you should be able to turn that to a formula. And that formula really isn't all that hard to develop if you think about what we did here. Okay? So if you remember, I subtracted the two x coordinates to get the length of this side. 
I subtracted the two y coordinates to get the length of that side. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do kind of a general version. And again, this doesn't change if your coordinates are positive, if they're negative, uh, doesn't matter, okay? So let's say I had a point here, and I'm gonna call this x1, y1. And I've got another point here, I'm gonna call this x2, y2. And I wanna find the length of that side there, okay? It's just any set of points that I wanna find the distance between. So you box it in with a horizontal side and a vertical side. And remember what I did in the previous example. I subtracted the two x coordinates. I figured out how far over this point was, x2 units, and how far over that unit was, uh, that point was, x minus one units. So this is x1 units over, that's x sub two units over. Uh, I can subtract those two values, subtract the two x coordinates to find the length of that side. Okay, same thing with the y coordinates. This point here is y1 units up. This point here is y2 units up. I can subtract y2 and y1, and that's gonna give me the length of that vertical side. Okay, we take all that information and we stick it into the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and what does that give me? Well, take a look what happens. You take the leg squared, x2 minus x1 squared, plus the other leg squared, y2 minus y1 squared, okay? I add those squares together and that'll give me like d squared, okay? Remember the last step, we took the square root. So if I want d, I can really just take the square root of that whole thing that's the distance formula, okay? Distance formula just says, subtract your two x-coordinates, square it. Subtract your two y-coordinates, square it. Take the square root of the whole thing, okay? Um, and the distance formula can be very, very simple to work with, okay? So, you don't really have to show that triangle every single time, although if you forget the, the distance formula, you definitely could, okay? So to go back and, and look at this, the original points I had were negative one, five, and 7, 11. Okay, I want to find the distance between those two. Uh, according to the distance formula, I can just subtract the two x coordinates. Okay, that's 7. So I've got point 1, I've got an x1 and a y1. Point 2, I've got an x2 and a y2. And the formula just says subtract the two x's. So x2 minus x1. Make sure you do minus and negative there x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That's 11 minus 5 squared, okay? Now, that's really the horizontal side length. That's the vertical side length. We're gonna square them, add them together, and take the square root, okay? In this particular case, that's gonna be eight squared. That's gonna be six squared. We're taking the square root, okay? Remember, the order of operations always applies, all right? You can't just take the square root of eight and six, okay? You have to square first, get your 64 and your 36. Okay, that's gonna be the square root of 100, which is just equal to 10, okay? So you can see we got the same answer that we got uh, using right triangles, all right? Uh, just to do a couple more here. Let's say I wanted to find the distance between the points 3, negative 1 and negative 2, negative 13, okay? You may want to stop the video and try to find the distance using the distance formula and see if you can get it to work out, okay? Um, and then you can check it when you're done. Okay, you started the video up again. Uh, let's, let's check the answer here, okay? Formula says subtract your two x-coordinates, okay? Again, the order doesn't matter, you just want to stay consistent. Um, so I'm going to make this my second point. There's my x2 and my y2. Uh, I'm going to make the other point, my first point, there's my y1. Sorry, my x1 and my y1. So formula says take x2 minus x1. That's going to be negative 2 minus 3. Square it. Plus y2 minus y1. Be really, really careful with negative signs here. 
Okay? And then we're going to take the square root of the whole thing. So negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. We're squaring that. Negative 13 minus a negative 1. That's the same thing as plus 1. So that's going to be negative 12 squared. Okay? We're taking the square root of the whole thing. I can't stress this enough. Don't stick these negatives at your calculator to square them, okay? You should always get a positive when you square something. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, okay? Negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 144, all right? Work that out. You're going to get the square root of 169. The distance between those two points is just 13 units, okay? That's all that's going on there, all right? Uh, one final example, okay? Again, just be very, very careful with your positive and negative signs. Uh, let's say I wanted to find the distance between the points uh, 2, negative 1, and 6, 1. Okay? Um, again, I'm going to put everything in the formula. x2 minus x1, 6 minus 2, squared. y2 minus y1, be careful, it's minus a negative 1. Square your differences, add them together, take the square root. Okay, can be pretty quick. That's going to be 4 squared, which is 16. Uh, that's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, you're going to get the square root of 20. Remember, we've talked about simplifying radicals. Don't give these, to me as, uh, these answers to me as decimals unless the question specifically says to give it to me as a decimal. Uh, otherwise, simplify the radical. Okay, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. That's 2. That stays the square root of 5. 2 radical 5 ends up being the final answer. Okay, so that's how that works. All right, if they ask you to do something like finding the perimeter of a triangle, you're going to have to pick two points at a time. Find the length of one side, pick another two points, find the length of another side, pick another two points, find the length of the third side. Okay, you're not going to be able to put all three points into a distance formula to find, for example, the perimeter of a triangle. So keep in mind, you're going to have to break problems up in pieces uh, to be able to work with this. Um, you can also substitute variables into the formula. Sometimes you can solve for a missing value if you need a particular length. Um, all kinds of different things that you can do. Okay? So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea about how the distance formula works.